So good morning. Um, first thing I'm going to say is um, I'd like to acknowledge the Wadawurrung traditional owners of this land and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are part of the Greater Geelong community today and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I'm Heidi. I'm CEO of Emerge Australia, the organisation that is hosting this conference. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today here in the room, watching through the live stream to Facebook or through Go Live. We have had a really fantastic couple of days. I'm excited and slightly nervous about how many fantastic new contacts we've made and how many meetings I've managed to schedule for when I'm back in the office. <laughs> I hope that all of you who have been here for the last two days are feeling exactly the same. Uh, this has really been an exercise, not just in knowledge sharing, but in relationship building. And I really do feel that we've managed to work some magic in making that happen. So I'm really excited to welcome so many new faces today when we're focusing on treatment and management. So we're beginning this morning with two clinicians who work with patients with MECFS. We're then hosting a clinical Q&A session and all the questions have been submitted in advance via email and social media. So this is just a shout out to say it's apologies if you missed the call for asking a question, but we're hopeful that we've selected a good representation of the questions which came in and we got a lot. Uh, we have a break at 12 noon, um, which is a tea break, coffee break. We've got about 15 minutes and then we have lunch, I think, at <laughs> one that one. Um, so after the break at 12 noon, we're going to come back here and we're going to have reports on day one and day two um, for people that missed it and want to catch up or if you missed any of the presentations. Uh, this afternoon, after that lunch at one o'clock, um, we're going to come back here and we have another short talk from our keynote speaker, Professor Ron Davis, who has made himself so available all week and it's been amazing and we've really been putting Ron to work for us. So we're going to welcome Dr. Da uh, Professor Davis back for uh, another short, short talk about his research. We're going to have a video report um, from Dr. Jared Younger on a progress report from his lab. And we're going to have a conversation about empathic design from architect Anthony Clark with patient activist Anna Kerr. So that's about architecture and empathic design. That's going to mark the end of the live streaming for the conference. For the people here in real life, we're then going to move on to some breakout sessions, which are in the form of round tables. We're going to explain more about this later, but basically, it's going to be an opportunity to hear directly about some of the research and ask whatever questions you have in very small groups with the scientists. And thank you to the scientists for uh, enabling us to make that happen. We'll tell you more later as well. Um, and then housekeeping. So we know that there are people here who live with MECFS and other health conditions. We want to let you know that we're more than happy for you to come and go as you need to. The Bellarine room is set aside for rest. There are a number of beds made up in the room and it's a designated quiet space with low lighting. It's on this level and it's on the left hand side and you come out of the doors, you go past the registration desk and it's on the left. So that's called the Bellarine room. All of our guests can have access to it at any point. The toilets are just outside this room on the left and we have Emerge Australia staff around at the registration desk. We have Laura here today and we have Georgia. Um, if you can't find us, we might be in the Flinders boardroom, which is to the side. Um, and if you can't find anyone from Emerge Australia, then the main Novotel reception desk will be able to help. In the event of a fire, please take the stairs to the lobby where hotel staff will provide more direction. So I also have a little announcement about next steps for Emerge Australia. Uh, we are launching our health and wellbeing survey for people with MECFS later this month. We'll be doing all that we can to reach as many people as possible with the condition and this is a reach out to the community to please support the survey and to watch for announcements about the launch. I'm also thrilled to announce that Emerge Australia has been chosen as one of a very small number of organisations to have won funding as part of a pilot programme in developing telehealth nursing. The programme includes evaluation as part of the Patient Pathways programme with the International Centre for Community Driven Research. The funding is for three years and we're just so excited to be able to make this step toward providing direct support to patients. And then finally, my thank yous. 
So I want to say a huge thank you to the McCusker Family Foundation for their support, which is enabling us to continue to develop the info service and to work on developing healthcare pathways for patients with MECFS, amongst other things. Other special thank yous have to give a really special huge thank you to Bill Rankin for all of his support and especially for the first draft document which formed the basis of our submission to government for funding which is part part of that funding is what supported us to be here today so a huge thanks to Bill for making that happen and for everything else that he's made. <laughs> Um, there are so many people, individuals, foundations, supporters and members who are supporting this organisation. It's impossible to name them all here. I started trying and I had this, and I, just had, I had to give up on the names, I didn't want to miss anyone out. But please know that we are so, so grateful for everyone's support. We're grateful for everyone who has made the journey here to Australia, who's made the journey here to Geelong, and I'm grateful to see so many people here today. Uh, last thank you again to the Federal Government Department of Health who provided the funding to host this conference. Um, a huge thank you to our Science Advisory Committee who selected all of the speakers, read abstracts and contributed so much to developing the programme. And there is another round of applause, special, special thank you to Associate Professor Brett Lidbury and Professor Paul Fisher who did so much on that committee. <laughs> And I'm going to say a thank you to my team. I have mentioned uh, Georgia, who's here today, who you'll see for the first time. Um, and Laura, who's been here all week, has just done anime. So she isn't in the room. Um, but honestly, I just encourage as, as many of you as possible to say a thank you to Laura for her work this week. We've been a little bit understaffed. Um, Amy, I also want to put a huge thank you to Amy. Um, she has really helped to make this conference happen, and she went down unwell. I know a lot of people are feeling unwell. Um, and Amy went down on day one of the conference and had to go back to Melbourne. So what Laura has managed to do has been absolutely above and beyond. She's done the job of three people instead of instead of one person so and then a uh, thank you to Danielle and um, who all of the keynote speakers will have had correspondence with and many of you will have had correspondence with Danielle over the last few months she sadly moved on to another organization she got poached because she's so high quality she's great and um, she did a huge amount for for putting this uh, conference together so that's the thanks for my team um, and then the last thing I'm going to do, I've said the last thing about three times, so the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short video which is going to remind us all about why we're here and then I'm going to be back on to introduce the next speakers. We've been forgotten about and that's in all areas including funding for research. Now, obviously you don't get to a treatment, you don't get to a cure without first having research and finding what's behind this. What, are, what is going on in the body that means that we're not making energy properly? Since the year 2000, in total, ME has received from the federal government $1.6 million total in 17 years commensurate with the prevalence of this disease, we're forgotten again. So I now want to start our program officially for today by introducing Dr. Mark Donohoe. Uh, I'm going to give you a little introduction. So, all right, come over. Come over. It's going to take a while. He's got a lot of achievements. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Dr. Donahoe is a registered Australian general practitioner and integrative medicine doctor. Uh, he's a graduate of Sydney University and has worked in private practice for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you, ha you had the number on your website and I thought that I'd make it, you know. Uh, he's a fellow of the Australasian Society for Lifestyle Medicine and is a fellow of the Australian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Uh, Dr Donohoe sees patients from around Australia and overseas with complex illnesses including ME-CFS, fibromyalgia, chemical toxicity and sensitivities and chronic inflammation. 
uh, Mark has developed a stepwise approach for assessment and treatment of complex syndromes and diseases, and while he is comfortable with prescribing drug therapies when necessary, his preference is for very specific non-drug therapies to restore capacity and balance. So I'd like to hand over to Dr. Donahoe.